The atmosphere is largely transparent to the incoming solar radiation as the insulation is in short waves. The gases in the atmosphere are not able to absorb the incoming solar radiation as it cannot absorb the short waves of the insulation. The atmosphere is almost transparent to the incoming solar radiation because of this. The insulation reaches the earth's surface and heats it as the short waves of the insulation can be absorbed by only the solid and the liquid particles. So the insulation heats the earth's surface whereas the atmosphere almost remains transparent to the incoming solar radiation. A small part of the insulation is absorbed in the in the troposphere by the dust particles and other solid particles and also by the water droplets present in the lower layer of the atmosphere as the short waves of the insulation can be absorbed by the solid and liquid particles. These small suspended particles present in the atmosphere also scatter the visible spectrum both in the space and towards the earth's surface, which adds color to the sky. The red color of the rising and the setting sun and the blue color of the sky are the result of the scattering of light within the atmosphere. The amount and intensity of insulation vary in different seasons and also during the day in the year. These variations that takes place in the amount of insulation received on the earth are due to the rotation of the earth on an inclined axis, the angle of inclination of the sun's rays, the length of the day, the transparency of the atmosphere, the distribution of land and sea and uh, out of this the most important is the rotation of the earth on an inclined axis which causes variation in the duration of day at different latitudes on the earth during the year. The earth's surface after getting heated by the incoming solar radiation transmits the heat in long waves which can be absorbed by the atmospheric gases. The heat radiated by the earth is in long waves and is called terrestrial radiation or the earth's radiation. So the atmosphere mainly gets heated by the terrestrial radiation and not by the incoming solar radiation. It is because of this that as we go away from the earth, the temperature decreases with increasing altitude in the troposphere as the main source of heat which uh, heats the atmosphere is the earth's radiation or the terrestrial radiation and not the incoming solar radiation. The air in contact with the earth's surface gets heated slowly and uh, with the passage of time the air in contact with the lower layers of the atmosphere also starts getting heated. This process of heating of the atmosphere or the transfer of heat from the earth to the atmosphere is called conduction. So one of the way by which the lower layers of the atmosphere close to the earth's surface gets heated is conduction. Besides conduction, convection and advection are the other ways by which the atmosphere gets heated. These are the ways by which the heat of the earth is transferred to the atmosphere. The air which is in contact with the earth after getting heated rises vertically on heating in the form of current and further transmits the heat of the atmosphere to higher level of the atmosphere. This process of vertical transfer of heat in the atmosphere is called convection. Transfer of heat also takes place by horizontal movement of air which is called advection. Horizontal movement of air is more important in transfer of heat over the earth's surface than the vertical movement. By this, the excess heat received in the tropical region is transferred from the tropical region to the temperate and the polar region. 
In the tropical region in northern India in the summer season, Lu, which is a hot, dry and desiccating wind blowing during the daytime, is a local wind which develops because of this advection process. So the atmosphere mainly gets heated by the terrestrial radiation or the Earth's radiation and not by the incoming solar radiation or the insulation. This heat received by the Earth by insulation is subsequently transferred to the atmosphere by the process of conduction, convection and advection.